Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to another video. So, as you know, a few days ago, actually, Arch Linux released the ISO for April 2021. And I did an installation video for this. This is the last video I did before this one. And on the release note, actually, it was written that there is now an installer included in the ISO. And I tried it actually out as soon as I saw it, but I couldn't get it to work. And I think I realized afterwards why. And some of you actually wrote me in the comments, this might be an April Fool, but indeed it's not an April Fool. We do have now an installer on the ISO. Now, what I'm gonna do in this video, I'm gonna boot up the machine here with the latest ISO for Arch. And we're gonna look at it shortly together and see what we can do and how actually the installer is going to install Arch on the system. So you can see here, I booted up the machine and I can just hit enter here and it's gonna boot up in a second. So it's booting up here now and it's gonna take a moment. This is a virtual machine. I'm testing this out now. I tested out actually this script already with several configurations. And this is, as you probably already know, the April 2021 Arch ISO. Now, let me actually make the fonts a little bigger here. So let me type in set font tur 132n so before starting up, let me just tell you one thing is that this script will work only on UEFI machines. So if you have an MBR or legacy machine, you will not be able to install with this script because it does actually create always a EFI system partition. So having said that, we can start the installer by typing in arch install and hit enter. And the first thing we need to do is to select our keyboard. Now I see a list of keyboards here on the side, but I don't see the one that I have. And so here you can enter question mark or help to search for more languages. So I'll type in help here and search for layout containing. Okay, so the layout I have is the Swiss German keyboard. Uh, so I'll try to type in, in here DE and uh, underscore if I manage to catch it, there you go. And I see it's, it's not working. So probably this is something that is gonna be fixed with later updates of the script, but I'm gonna type in, in here directly my keyboard layout so that I can continue the installation. There you go. So the country where I am in is Switzerland. So the number is 46 here. And the device where I want to install the system is the number two, as you can see on the list there, it's called VDA. Now I tried actually this installer with two disks as well, just to see if I was offered any option to create also LVMs or such a things, but I wasn't. So this is something that you have to keep in mind if you want to create actually something like LVM, uh, you will have to do it manually. Now I'm gonna select here the disk number two because this is the disk where I want to install the system. And we can choose one of the following file systems. So for this demo, I'm gonna choose actually BadRFS. So I'm gonna type in in zero. I tried also ext4 and xfs and they worked as expected. Now with BadRFS, it's a little interesting to see how the system is gonna be installed. So let's hit enter here. And we can also encrypt uh, the disk. So I'm actually gonna do this. I'm gonna type in here the password for encryption and also repeat it. And we can give a host name to the machine. I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it uh, Arch PadreFS. And now we can enter the root password if we wanna do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna enter one and repeat it. And we can enter here, we can create a user for the system. So I'm gonna create one with my name and I'm gonna give a password to this user and repeat it. Now, should this user be a super user? I'm gonna say yes. And now uh, enter again if we wanna create another user, but I don't need this. So I'm just gonna hit enter here to skip and continue. And now we have some choices. So we can choose whether we want to uh, install some predefined profiles, like for example, an awesome uh, window manager, the, a desktop, which is a generic desktop where you will be asked to choose one of the desktops that you see here. Uh, you can uh, pre-install uh, the predefined profile for GNOME, KDE, KDE, uh, KDE Wayland, or XORB, it's really up to you. So I tried actually until now GNOME and KDE, and I tried also the installer without any desktop environment. So I would just hit enter here without selecting anything. And if you do that, you're gonna basically install Arch, uh, you know, without any desktop environment whatsoever, with no XORG, it's just gonna be a, a terminal version of Arch using all systemd services. So you will have uh, systemd boot, you will have systemd networkd, 
you don't have any other extra packages. What else we are going to see right now, if we are installing a desktop environment, you will have also some other packages there like Network Manager, which are installed, but they are not actually active by default because the system is going to use all systemd services anyway. So um, I'm going to type in, in here three because I'm going to choose KDE in this case. Now it's asking you which um, graphic card you want to install. So I don't have actually here a preference. I'm going to install the Mesa uh, driver. And if you want, you can now also add some additional packages. Now, I don't know exactly which packages uh, are going to be installed. So I cannot really say here if I want to install some extra packages or not, uh, because maybe the ones that I want to install are going to be installed anyway. But if there is some specific packages that you absolutely need, then this is the place to type them in. And then I can hit enter. Now it's asking you which uh, network um, device you want to use for the installation. I have only here uh, an Ethernet interface, so I'm going to type in one. And you are asked to select DHCP, which is auto detect, or if you have a static IP, you can select the number one option. I'm going to go for the zero here for DHCP. So here it's asking me to enter a valid time zone. So if you know it, like in my case, for example, I can type in Europe slash Zurich. Now, if you don't know your time zone, then you would have to find out this before running the script. Otherwise, you will get probably an error. And then I can hit enter here. And this is basically a summary of what is going to happen. So you can see here I have uh, basically the mirrors uh, that are from my country. Uh, I see my keyboard layout there. I, saw, I see the host name. I see the device and the size. And I see the NIC, the interface, the Ethernet interface. I see also the profile, which is kd.py, it's a script, which I will leave a link actually to the video description below on the GitHub profile. You can actually go in there and see all the scripts uh, and all what it does. And then I can see the users created and also my time zone. So I can continue here by hitting enter. And it's now going to start in two seconds, one second, and there you go. So. Now it's basically uh, formatted the VDA1 partition as a VFAT partition because it's an EFI machine. And now it's encrypting also the VDA2 partition, which is the main partition where I told the system to format this as a BADRFS file system. Now, the encryption of the partition might take maybe a couple of seconds, probably like 20, 30 seconds, and then it should move forward in installing the base packages. And as you can see now, it's formatted the um, main partition with the mapper device. It's called LuxLoop as a BADRFS with the BADRFS file system. And it mounts set the partitions to slash MNT for the main partition and mount boot for the um, boot partition. And it has also created the new mirror list. And right now it's installing the base packages with the base, base devil, Linux, Linux firmware, EFI boot manager, nano as an editor and BADRFS procs. I notice here that there is no uh, packages for the processor. So we are going to see later if they are going to be installed afterwards or not. If not, we will have to add them manually after the installer finishes. So after these base packages are going to be installed, the installer is going to install XORG and uh, also the drivers. And you can see also it has enabled the service for systemd networkd and the resolve d uh, service for systemd. And now it's installing also the Plasma, Meta and the KDE applications and STDM, which is the display manager for KDE. So this is going to take probably like one minute or less, depending, of course, also on your Internet connection. So I'm going to pause the video here and I'll be back with you guys once this is finished. So here we go, guys, the packages have now finished installing. And as you can see, also it enabled the STDM display manager. It created the user with my name, set the password for it and also made me a sudo user set the password for the root user and also updated the etc fs tab file which as you know is the file containing all the mount points of the system now before rebooting the machine actually let me clean up the terminal because we are already here with big fonts so i want to see actually the fs tab file so let me type in cat slash mnt slash etc slash fs tab I want to see actually how it's mounted the BADRFS file system. So you can see there by default, actually, we have one sub volume, which is the root sub volume, and we don't have any other sub volumes available. So if you want to have more sub volumes using this script, you will have to uh, create them yourself and then mount them persistently in the FS tab file. I see also some of the options used here. We have rel a time. If you want more infos about the options, you can check actually the last video I did about BADRFS.
Now this is a virtual machine, so there is no SSD in here and I don't need to actually change anything specific, but I see also there is no compression option available. So if these are important aspects for you, if the options are important for you, you might have to go in there and eventually change them or modify them to suit your needs. So the installer is going to install a basic uh, battery festival system with the roots of volume. But if you want to have more and different kind of options, you will have to go in there and do it yourself. At least as far as I can tell until now in the installer, there is no other options to do that. But anyway, let's reboot the machine. So let's type in reboot here. As you can see already, it's asking me for the passphrase. So encryption worked perfectly. So let me enter the password here. It's going to take a second here to decrypt and then it's going to start the uh, system in KDE and then we will have a little bit more in-depth look there at the system and what the installer actually did on the system. So we are here in STDM so let me enter my password and we should going into KDE in a second. There you go. So let me uh, first of all adjust my sc uh, screen resolution because the VM doesn't pick up the screen resolution automatically. So I'm going to go here with 1080p. There you go. That looks better. So don't worry about these volumes here. It's just that there is no volume. But if I hit the media keys, you can see the volume is working fine. Now, uh, this is a Manila install of Arch with KDE, basically. So if we go to system settings again, and we go down to system information, you can see we have KDE Plasma 521.3. And we have kernel version 11.11, .11, which I think is the last one, which is the last one. And we are on Xorg. So let me have a look here at the terminal. So let me open up console. And let's see if I actually need to change also here the keyboard layout because it's not automatically done. So I need to go here under input devices, keyboard layouts, and I need to add here my uh, Swiss keyboard. I think I need to go to German and German Swiss actually German Swiss, this one right here. And I'm going to select the one with no dead keys and click OK. And I can, I can remove the English one. And now I think I am able to work with the terminal. So let me go here full screen and increase the font size so you can see better. So let's have a look here at what the installer did. So again, if I type in cat slash Etsy slash FSTAB, you can see there the same options we saw before. So we have one root sub volume and the EFI partition mounted on slash booth. Now let me also check what's in the mkinitcpio.com file. So let me type in cat slash etc slash mkinitcpio.com. And as you can see here, it's a very short file because they just added what's needed. So we have under the modules BadRFS. This is also uh, the recommendation from the ArchWiki is to put the BadRFS option in the modules and not in the hooks. And we have also the hook here for encrypt because we actually have encrypted the uh, root uh, subvolume. So we have these and we can also look at systemd boot. So let me switch to the root user and go into the boot directory. So cd slash boot and type in ls-l. So we have here the EFI partition, we have the two image files, and we have also the Linux kernel, and we have also the loader directory. So I want to look in there. Let's go into the cd loader ls-l. And as you can see here, we have the entries and the loader.com. So these are the two files we need for systemd boot. So if we're going to look in there, let's look at the loader.com file. So cat and then loader.com you can see there we have basically two options the timeout three which is commented out so it's not active and also the console mode so that's fine let's go into the entries so let's type in cd and then entries ls-l and as you can see we have our entry there so let's type in cat and then just hit the tab here to autocomplete so you can see here we have the entry created for our installation we don't see it because we have no timer but you can see here how it looks like. So we have the title, the Linux defined, the init RD defined, the options where the crypt device is actually specified. You can see here we have the UUID and the name of the mapper device. We have also the path to the mapper device and also the options for this machine. So this is how you would configure the BadRFS file system with encryption using systemd boot. So this is how the installer actually created the entries here in systemd boot. So we don't have grub, we don't have any other bootloader we are using here systemd services. Now the same thing goes also for the network. If I type in here cd slash etc systemd and then network, 
type in ls-l, you can see we have um, the file for one interface, which is the ENP1S0. It's the Ethernet interface I have in this system. So if I type in here cat and then autocomplete, you can see it's a very simple uh, file. This is the typical configuration for systemd networkd. Uh, it's very simple actually. You have the match with the name of the interface and the network where the parameter is DHCP, which I defined during the installation. So by default, actually, the installer is going to actually run your machine with systemd networkd. However, if we type in, in here system CTL status network manager and hit enter, you can see actually network manager is installed, but it's not active. So we have also here network manager available in case probably that you don't want to have systemd network D or you have accustomed with network manager with these options. You can probably then disable systemd network D and use network manager instead. Now this is really up to you and the installer here install network manager nevertheless. Now one last thing before I wrap up the video here, if I type in again cat slash etc slash fstab. Another thing that you notice is that we don't have any swap partition installed as well. So you have to keep in mind if you want to have swap here, you might have to go in and create eventually a swap file. Now I tried also to install the GNOME profile with the ext4 file system or XFS and you're going to have basically the same thing. You're going to have a, a EFI partition and a root partition, but you won't have any swap partition or any home partition for that matter. So if that is important to you, then you will have to use eventually another installer or you would have to install Arch manually. So this is a quick view of the installer that is shipping now in the Arch ISO. I believe this script is just a start here. They are probably going to improve it in future releases. I can imagine they're going to add more options and more features. So we will see what happens with future releases. Now, if you try the installer, let me know in the comments below what you think about it and how it's working for you or if you discovered something else. And if you have any question about the video, let me also know in the comments below. As you know, I will try to answer you as soon as I can. And again, if you want to support my work, guys, you can do so by becoming Patreons. As you probably know, on Patreon, we are doing now a live webinar every month. Uh, we are focusing about a topic for Linux, of course. Or if you want, you can also donate via PayPal through my website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you very soon in the next one.